Welcome back. In our next topic on the application of the derivative, we're going to take a look at extrema of functions, or what we're talking about as the highest and lowest points of functions. Probably the most critical piece of this is identifying what are the critical numbers. We're going to deal a lot with maxes and mins over the next couple of weeks in describing graphs and what's going on with graphs and all that stuff. And the first step in, is always going to be to find the, the critical numbers. So at, the critical numbers are going to occur when f prime of, of c equals 0. So when you take the derivative, you set it equal to 0, and you solve it, you're going to find those c values. Or it could be that f prime of c does not exist, provided that the original function is continuous at that, at that point. Um, those are called critical numbers. Now, the critical numbers are potential turning points of the graph. And what they also are is potential highest and lowest points on the graph, what we call our local and absolute maxes and mins. The difference is that the absolute are the lowest value on the graph, and the locals are just turning points. It's going to, f of c is going to be a max if for every f, f of x is less than f of c for all values. And it's going to be a min if it's the other way around. Um, in these problems, what you're going to find in this particular section is I'm going to give you an interval. So you're going to have to take a look at the endpoints as well. You have to take a look at what's going on with the graph at the endpoints. And you'll see this on the AP exam every once in a while. If they give you a set interval, you've got to make sure that you check the endpoints, the, the value of the function at the endpoints as well. Some guidelines for finding the extreme of functions given a, an interval. Find all your critical numbers. Um, you know, find all the critical numbers of f on the interval from a to b. Um, the a to b interval is defined for you, so this should be finding guidelines of extrema on the interval from a to b. Those are x values. So find all your critical numbers by taking the derivative, setting it equal to 0, wherever it's 0 or undefined, and those are critical numbers. And then you want to calculate the value of your function at your critical numbers. You want to calculate the value of your function at your endpoints, at f of a and f of b. And then the maxes and the mins are going to be the largest and smallest values in steps two and three. So let me do a couple of examples for you. First one, pretty straightforward polynomial function. Our first step in these problems is to find the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be 3x squared minus 12. Factor out the 3. Continue to factor. And then that identifies your critical numbers as x equals plus or minus 2. I'm then going to notice that I'm on the interval between negative 3 and 5, so I had to calculate the endpoints. So I'm going to calculate f of negative 3, and I got that to be 9. I calculated f of 5, and I got that to be 65. Then I have to do f of my critical numbers, f of 2. I got to be negative 16. And f of negative 2, I got to be positive 16. So what this shows me, if I compare these four values now, um, that 9, that 65, that's negative 16, 16. 65 is the largest, so this is the absolute max on that interval. Negative 16 is the smallest, so that's the min on that interval. And what we would say, or the way we would speak of this, is 65 is the maximum of this function f of x on the interval between negative 3 and 5. And negative 16 is the minimum value of the function on the same interval. Let's look at one that has the derivative is a little bit more complex. This one is f of x is x minus 1 to the 2 thirds plus 2. And we want to find the maxes and mins on the interval from 0 to 9. So find the derivative, f prime of x. When I found the derivative, I got 2 over 3 times x minus 1 to the 1 third power. And notice that the numerator can never be 0, so the derivative can never be 0. But the, der but the denominator can be 0, and that's where the derivative would be undefined. So you do still have a critical number at x equals 1, because that's what will make the denominator 0. I then need to calculate what is f of 0. And when I did f of 0, I got 3. I did f of 1, my critical number. And I got 2. And then I did f of 9. And I got 6. So again, this is the min of the function. And this is the max of the function on that interval. You don't really need to know what x minus 1 to the 2 thirds plus 2 looks like. It's a seagull type graph. But right now, the biggest thing is that algebraically and using calculus, you can calculate what are the minimum and maximum values. 
what we're going to be doing in these next few sections is we're going to be describing graphs, describing maxes, mins, turning points, and we're going to eventually be able to sketch things like x minus 1 to the 2 thirds plus 2 without having your calculator handy to do so. So good luck on this assignment, and uh, I'll answer some questions that you may have in class.